let's say you've got your uh, estimates and your um, quotations and your purchase orders and whatever in emails all over the place. You want to find them all and compile them and then you put them in your email search. All you have to do is put the first nine digits of the number in there and the receipt will come up, the tax invoice will come up, the quotation, the whole lot. So that's, the, that's why you do what I'm doing right now. I briefly mentioned uh, in the previous video that I've got these things called boxed algorithms which have a border around them. Uh, we're gonna look at the first one, it's our invoice number gem generator. Why do I want it uh, to generate numbers automatically based on date as you can see? is because all these spreadsheets are gonna end up in different folders and files and everything, everywhere. How are they gonna to relate to each other? How is the third invoice of the year gonna know about the second invoice of the year, right? Unless we open up the same spreadsheet over and over again. We don't want, we want, we want this to be uh, uh, independent. They want, we want all of these uh, spreadsheets to be independent of each other because I could copy, paste it, rename it, do everything. So we're gonna use date because uh, they're sequential throughout the year. Now, what have we done here? We've got this, 0101, and we've got a function called year now, just to pull up today's um, year. Now, you can go into um, formulas and work out what these are, all these formulas and so forth. I can go into time and date formulas, which I'm currently in now. All of them, they're all in there, and that little button there on the top left, function wizard, and you can watch a individual videos uh, all over YouTube on what each function does, but no one's really putting it together in a package. That's why I'm making these videos, the ECRM videos. Um, now, so, all right, I've uh, got that there, year now, with that formula, and I've put in a uh, concatenate function, love this function, uh, pulled it all together, joined them all, they, all together, and I've got, I've got this uh, first of first 2023. Why didn't I just write it in there I could just write it in there, but the year will change. Next year it'll be 2024. Um, okay, that's why that's there. Now I've got this uh, date value function which converts that, which is really text right now. Reference text, as you can see. I often put little uh, annotations here to tell me what's going on and, and not making my com uh, formulas complicated. As you can see, that's spread out. This is another individual formula. And this is another individual, very short, very easy to follow when you do maintenance on your own stuff a year or two or three years later. You can pick it up very easily. Now, the next one is now. This is a now function right now. So that's the time and date. Okay, and now we're getting into the nitty gritty of it. So we've got the days this year. Uh, you may not be happy with the way I've um, spread this out. You know what? I think you're right. I think you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to... Uh, uh, move this lot here, I think, uh, just a little bit over to the left. I'm going to go cut and paste. By the way, whenever you cut and paste, as long as you cut and pasting, it will drag all of, change all of the cell references. See that? It's still referencing those two cells, even though they were over here before. Uh, don't be afraid to cut and paste. Uh, I think I might move that there to uh, cut and paste here now. Why? Because it seems to flow on here. It's a lot better. So I'll fix the borders later. Um, not for this video. So I'm just going to save that for now. Yeah, always save as you go. Do a backup copy as well. Now, so I've got my uh, time now and uh, a reference date value here uh, of the first day of the year. So I've got this uh, formula here now. Days, number of days this year, which is called the formula is days. And then you put two dates in there, I8 and I7, which is those two cells. And the, the number of days between them is 122. So hypothetically speaking, if I, this was the second of the first of 2023, that would come up with the number one. You say, but hold on, it's the second day of the year. Yes, it is. It is the second day, but that's where the 18 hours come in. So we don't have to put an add one in this formula. Just leave it as it is. And I'll put round down because I don't want it to say round up to day number 123 right now because we're past the halfway mark in this date it's, uh, after 6 p.m. So we just want round down back to the number of days because we're gonna deal with the um, proportion of the day in the next one here, which is uh, hours now, okay, and minutes now. Now we've got these multipliers. This is multiplied by 1440 to bring up how many minutes there are in each day. Uh, 
and we've had uh, 175,680 minutes so far in the year, over 122 days, plus another um, 60 minutes times 18 hours, plus another 15, uh, sorry, uh, 58 minutes. It's nearly seven o'clock. So we add that up and we get the total minutes. I might, I might even um, in year. There we go. That looks good. So I'm going to say that every time I make a change. So, so now I've got that. Now I want this. I want 23 at the start of my number because that's going to tell me what year it is. And that's just the right function. Right, the reference cell and the first two digits, 23. 22, first two digits from the right that is. Okay, I'm going to put a dash there. Now this one here, what if it's the first minute of the year? And my invoice number will be one. I want I want another five zeros in front of it. So I've got this uh, formula. Uh, that number there, if it's uh, less than 100,000, put a zero in this cell. So that, it's an if function. Spread your formulas out, make it simple. There you go. If it's less than 10,000, put a, put a zero here. And so on and so forth. All the way down to if it's less than 10, uh, put a zero here. So in the first minute, of the year, I'll have an invoice number 000001. So I want those six digits. I want all my invoice numbers to be sequential, obviously. So this is sequential. It's not uh, sequential as in uh, immediately after by one digit, but it is sequential, very important. And this uh, date reference uh, is allowing us to uh, have these spreadsheets saved in many different folders from many different uh, jobs and invoices and so on and so forth. Now, uh, it's the only way to do it. So we've, whacked, uh, we've concatenated the lot, and there it is. Love that function. And I've got this QTE on the end. That, by the way, that space is there. It's just an empty cell with a space bar hit, just to give us spaces there. Keep it simple, stupid. Right, don't put all these complicated spaces in your concatenate formula. You can do that in <coughs> Pardon me, you can do that in there, but no, keep it simple. So what's this QTE? Well, this is a, what's called VLOOKUP. There it is, VLOOKUP. It's got a cost, what's it? That's the reference cell, the first, see how it's different colors? Blue, red. The first stage in blue comes from this uh, reference area here, quotation. See that, the same quotation. It's looking up that and it's finding it in this red section here, M6 to N16, which is this square here. Look up in there, uh, the left column, VLOOKUP stands for vertical lookup down the left column. So it's looking up quotation from that reference cell and finding it and then number two comes there and what's in uh, column number two, that's the column by the way, look up column number two, it's got QTE in it. And the zero is just saying, yes, it has to be exactly that. All right, that's just some tolerance number on the end. So that's that. Let's see what happens then if I change this quotation from the drop down menu, which, funny enough, this drop down menu, if you look at it, data validity, uh, this area here is referencing, where is it? Should be referencing here. I'm pretty sure it does. M6. Yeah, there it is. M6, M6, yeah, that's the start of the array. So it's referencing uh, this this actually, just the left-hand side. And that's where that comes from. Look at that again, data, validity, um, cell range, put your cell range in there. Um, error alert, always get rid of this, it's annoying. That way I can fill anything in that cell if I want. So, um, all right, let's change it. Estimate, okay. Now it's looking up, VLOOKUP estimate, put the uh, abbreviation in the EST. So that's where I get my uh, invoice number from, fantastic. But right now it's sitting, uh, it's uh, 176,824 minutes past the New Year's. And we've got this other number, an older number. What's that all about? Well, that's that there is also a drop down menu, just two options there surrounded by orange. I've decided to put orange around my uh, reference ranges for for um, drop down menus. That means that should have a border as well, shouldn't it? And it should be orange. 
because that's a drop down menu that I just pointed out. Yes, save that. Um, that's just my way, this is my thing, it's not mandatory. If I look at that, I know it's a drop down menu, and probably I could do V lookups as well. I might be uh, changing that border to, I could do a border around that and make it uh, red because that's what it comes up as in the formula. Well, there you go. Now I'll do this again. I'm going to add a line here and a line here, not there and here and change that color to orange. I wonder if I can get rid of this and it'll still keep it or not. So let's muck around a bit, get rid of that. There we go. Change these two to orange because I haven't deleted anything. What the hell? Oh, look at this. It's making different colored bloody borders. This is interesting. Didn't know about that. I'm going to cancel this, right? Go in there again, now that I know what I'm doing. I'll leave that and I'm going to change the color first. Now I'm going to put that there and that there. Not that, not that. And go OK. And now I've got, oh. Change them all. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Formula. Red. Oh, well what the hell happened before? See that? I've got red there, orange there. See what happens. So you've got red and orange. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, bear with me. A lot of uh, liberal officers uh, inventing things as you go. So I'm going to just change that one there to orange and I'm going to hit that to orange and go OK. All right, I've got there. Look at that. There's my uh, drop down menu. There's my V lookup. Fantastic. Keep moving. So here's our drop down menu here and we've got an old date there. What's that all about? Well, let's have a look and see what that's cross referencing. It's cross referencing this down here, which stands for current document number which means if we go back to here, our current document number is not gonna change. Why? Because it has a drop down menu using data validity and our cell range is exactly to those two cells I just showed you before. Those two here. Right. And that's not gonna change unless I pull down the drop down menu and change it, right? So it's static. That's another thing about drop down menus. It keeps numbers static. If other things change, the number in there won't change because you require drop down menu to change it. Fantastic, I want the old number, right? Because now it's gone from an estimate to a, uh, well, let's just jump, grab that old number there. Estimate, and now it's going to be a uh, in tax invoice, okay? And I'm gonna drop down that menu. I'm gonna keep that number again by going to the second option. The first, that's right now. That's when we want to start afresh. And now I've got the same number as the quotation and estimate, but it's got INV on the end to differentiate me and identify what it is. <coughs> so now I can have everything in this menu here that I've constructed right through from estimate, purchase order, quotation, to uh, contract, to tax invoice, um, and finally receipt. And they'll all have the same number, but with only three letters on the end different. That's what this formula here does. So we've got uh, we've got to dump the three letters on the end. So we've got a left, left plus nine letters. So if we count nine letters, we've got 23, that's two, plus a dash, that's three, and another six is nine, and we don't want any more after that, okay? So we'll grab the first nine digits from the existing invoice number, which is there. We've put them in this cell. Now we've got a space here. I like to just hit it with a space bar just to get that space in there. Keep your formula simple. And L13, which is just referencing the current um, status of our header up here. I'm in a formula right now. So that's what that is. So I can, whatever that is up here, tax invoice, for example, it's gonna have that abbreviation because it's just copying what's in here. Done. Now, that means uh, in practice, you've seen the formula now, we've got a sequential numbering system, minutes of the year, and if I want to now go to uh, 
turn this into a receipt, use the same, all the same details, add some uh, EFT deposits paid and so on and so forth. We've got an outstanding balance of zero at the end here. Okay, I want it to be a receipt. Now I can keep the same number, done. It's same number, different letters on the end, different identifier for the document. They all have the same number. So if I grab that part of the number and look it up in an email search or something, my receipt, my invoice, my estimate, it's all gonna be there, fantastic. You, this is how you wanna do it. It's gonna be great. That's why I've done it like I did and really that's the nail on the head right there, isn't it, for the whole video. Let's say you've got your uh, estimates and your um, quotations and your purchase orders and whatever in emails all over the place. You wanna find them all and compile them and then you put them in your email search. All you have to do is put the first nine digits of the number in there and the receipt will come up, the tax invoice will come up, the quotation, the whole lot. So that's, the, that's why you do what I'm doing right now, okay? And if we want to start afresh, let's say I want to reuse this, uh, this template for something else completely different. Let's say I'm gonna start with a, a quotation. I can then go to the first menu, which is right now, uh, with a new number and start with Q2E and away I go. So that's what we're doing and why we're doing it. And that's the formula for it. I'll clean up those borders a bit and uh, good luck to you.